Let me take a simple example of a decision. It's a classic example, one of the earliest ones that I used, it was in the 1970s. My son Michael used to go to a public school when I lived in Philadelphia called Lower Merion. We took him out and put him in a private school called Haverford, and he got in an argument with his mother saying, you're wasting your money. Haverford's not much better than, than Lower Merion. And she'd say, oh, it's just like you, Michael, you don't like discipline. At, uh, at uh, Haverford, you, they discipline, you can go to Princeton. He says, I know kids who went to Princeton from Lower Merion. I thought that's a futile uh, debate, so I said, okay, you guys, let's sit around the kitchen table to deal with your problem. My, so both of them, when you structure your problem, you should invite everyone to put in factors. That doesn't hurt you. But you don't want their judgments because they may be against you. It depends. So if you sat down the Palestinians, the Israelis, to sit together, they could put all the factors. But you don't want to use the Israeli judgment for the Palestinians, the Palestinians for that. That's a separate how you, how you deal with a problem like that because they may totally disagree and you have to educate them. We'll talk about that. This conflict opposing interests is the hardest thing to deal with. But before we did, they said, hey, Dad, I have a friend who went to this school called Harriton, which is uh, so far from the house, there was no bus going there. I wasn't going to argue with him. Let's put it and see what happens. Michael, why do you go to school? So the goal satisfaction in school. Learning, friends, school life, vocational training, college preparation, music classes. These were his criteria. If you had your problem, you'll have your own. But he thought about it, and we've lived with it, and it seemed like it's a good set of factors. Are you with me? You have the goal, this is a very simple hierarchy. Goal, criteria, alternatives. These are the things that, these serve as the filters to judge which comes out best. So now we have to ask, okay, to choose the best school, which of these criteria is the most important? Well, we say let's compare them. How much more important is learning than making friends? Remember I said ones here that I'm not gonna go. Michael says, oh, it's true I go to school to learn, but learning is not extremely more important than friends because school without friends is like hell. On the other hand, learning and friends are not equal because school is about learning. I can make friends on the street. So he said, let's face it, I'm not a great scholar. To me, learning is moderately more important than making friends. Uh, he said, oh, my dad is a professor. I better say a little more. So he says, oh, learning to me is between moderately and strongly more important. So we put a four and automatically one four. How much more important is learning than school life? Well, what's school life? How the discipline, the clothing, I don't know, whatever they ask for. He says, oh, I'm brave. I can learn despite the strictness of school life, but moderately. Learning and vocational training are the same to him. Learning college preparation, learning is more important than college preparation, moderately. Learning in music classes is between moderate and strong. Now, when you compare, so automatically, reciprocal here, friends and school life, making friends was very strongly more important than school life, uh, moderately more. But look at that, friends is not more important than college preparation. College preparation is strongly more important than making friends. So it's the one-fifth goes here, and so on. Are you with me? In this matrix, there are 6 by 6, 36 minus 6 is 30 divided by 2, because there's 15 judgments to make. This exercise took about 40 minutes to do. And from that, then, I said we raise this matrix to powers. Enough, you don't have to raise it to many, too many powers. To, and then you add the rows, and you normalize them, and you get these as the priorities. By the way, uh, in the literature of science, I have already talked about something and legitimized it that used to be, still is objectionable, it's an axiom. People must not be inconsistent, by inconsistent being intransitive. If you prefer apples to oranges, and you prefer oranges to bananas, you must never say, I prefer bananas to apples or to oranges. That's a sin. And when I used to, my friend John Hassani, he won the Nobel Prize in economics. Uh, he died in 1980. We were very close friends. He'd come to my house and so on. And I said, John, team A beats team B. Auburn beats, I don't know what. And that team beats the third one. And they beat uh, Auburn. He said, That's one. let's not bother about that. And so he says, the team case is like an exceptional case and found uh, one more, another area. 
He said, these two are, but, but look how they suffer, how, much pro how many problems there are, because you assume people are in transit there, are, are transitive when people are in transit. Sorry, you assume people are in transit when people are transit. You go to, I don't know which way. Uh, you assume people are transitive when people are in transit, right? They assume, they want people to be transitive. You go to the supermarket and you buy apples, even though you prefer apples to oranges, oranges, bananas, you buy apples, oranges, bananas. You know, and you buy maybe more bananas, you buy apples, that's crazy. So I say, to be inconsistent is a blessing. If you're not too inconsistent, that your judgments are as reliable as a monkey, nor you're so tightly consistent that you don't change your mind, maybe like George Bush about Baghdad, being Baghdad, I don't know. You know, you got to leave room for readjusting what you thought before because of new information that says you didn't know it all before and you didn't pick enough factors to define your ground. Do you hear me? That's the way we're made, it's lucky. If we were perfectly consistent, you will never learn something new that'll change your mind about what you knew yesterday. You would be suicide, there won't be a human race. So we have, <clears throat> we have to move with a modicum of inconsistency. So how inconsistent, I can measure, I find a measure of inconsistency, and it says there's a tolerable level of about 10%. Let me give you an example. Suppose I order a table, would you say this is about a yard wide, and a carpenter delivers a table, but it's not a yard, it's two yards. I'd kill him. So that's what I told you, so and so, I want a yard. But if you brought me a table that's a yard and a couple of three inches, I can live with it. So you don't want to be so inconsistent that the whole world changes, you don't know what to do with that. And you don't want to be so consistent that you will not yield when the new evidence comes there. That's a fact like a religion. I mean, it's a fact. So there's an axiom, axioms in economic theory, utility theory, it says you have to be transitive. But you know that's contradicted and they want to shush all those things that violate it. That's not good. Okay, so let's continue. The next thing is, now I compare the schools, A, B, C, under learning. Say, which is better under learning? And he was willing to admit that Haverford, which private school, was moderately better. And this third school, he thought, he'd never been there, but he put his bias. He thought it'd be better than Lower Merion, but he, <coughs> he said that Haverford was also moderately better than it. And from these, we got the, priorities here. And then about friends you could make, Michael is such a friendly guy, he makes friends on the airplane, ever you get tired of Michael, his friendly style, you know, <laughs> takes you over as a politician. Uh, so they're equal. Uh, school life, he was strongly miserable at Haverford, you could see that. And these two <laughs> other two schools were about the same. They add to one all these points. And similarly, okay, so now we continue, and here are these uh, six priority vectors under learning, friends, school life. So you multiply this, these numbers by the importance of learning, these by uh, importance of friends, etc. and add, and you see this third school dropped out, there was no argument. And for all practical purposes, these are tied. I mean, 1% difference could be systemic error, and she could never, did not add criteria, nor change judgments to make this school really win out. And so we took him out of this school and put him back in the other school, and he went on to finish his education. Now electrical engineer works on, he's in Arizona, uh, works on satellite, nuclear, uh, you know, missiles, et cetera. And uh, two years after that, he and I did the example again. It's in my first book, I found he was absolutely right. He was right. 